So uh, good morning, afternoon, uh, and also for those who are watching the archive, potentially good evening. Randy Lorca here uh, through Kenny Learn, and uh, really excited to get into a conversation and learn a little bit about what Palliser is doing uh, on their teacher training for blended and online. I've been in conversations with a number of folks as well uh, about uh, combining and pooling resources into a program uh, that may be operating under the Canadian e-learning network. So looking forward to seeing what Palliser has got uh, going as well. Uh, as others, and we'll invite you, if you are interested in watching this recording, if you want to get in the conversation, send me an email, and I'll post po my email in the text chat, uh, and I can give you connections to further ideas that are going on. But the focus here for this session right now at this point is to, to learn a little bit about what uh, Palliser has done. Alison Hancox uh, was recruited and joined Palliser School Division to create Palliser Beyond Borders, a new online school. In, uh, in southern Alberta, and uh, Allison uh, hails from um, doing uh, extensive work in Argyle uh, Center in Edmonton, uh, and uh, really very strong, creative, engaging work. Uh, Live online captured me from the beginning when I first saw it, and that was Allison's um, initiative. So really interested in lear about learning what's going on in Palliser, which has been operating now for a year to up to Two years now? Is that right? Uh, actually, we're in, into our third year now. Well, into the third year. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah, so, but a lot to learn from Allison, and we were talking as well that she's uh, going and continuing in her learning journey, going on to uh, her doctorate work through Athabasca. So, without further ado, let's, uh, Allison, over to you. Let's see what you have for us today, and then we'll do Q and A and follow up afterwards. Great. Well, thanks so much. So we're going to start off with um, a, uh, some introductions here and, and see where everyone's at. I, I certainly know my my colleague Wendy Plum, and I don't know you, Lisa. So we're going to we're going to move into identifying where you are on the map there, Lisa and Wendy. If you want to squeeze yourself into Alberta as well, I'm actually today on a in a small community in southern Alberta, Pitcher Butte. And I am almost on the main street, so that I've got enough internet connection. And uh, Lisa, you're next door, are you? I am. Sorry, I was trying to draw and uh, talk all at the same time. Apparently, that didn't work. Uh, oh, there, there I am. There, I mean, bright, bright sun <laughs> covering, obliterating okay. the southern half of the Vancouver Island. So, I, if Randy is at home, I'm about uh, 15 minutes from where he is. Okay. Well, tell us, uh, tell us who you are, Lisa, and your work in in online delivery. So, um, currently, uh, I'm the District Information Technology Coordinator for my school district, uh, which is uh, K-12, to a regular public K-12 to system. Um, with, um, and this is my second year in that job. I have uh, done contract work and associate faculty work for Royal Roads in their um, Master's in Learning and Technology and also in their um, Leadership Management. Um, I've done some work for um, some ID and some um, writing for Open School, which is sort of our uh, province-wide consortium that manages in the past um, strictly distance learning, and now they have moved uh, more and more into the online uh, realm. I've done some um, sort of self-designed courses for um, SEAT uh, here in, in the province of BC, which is sort of a um, Randy would do a better job of explaining <laughs> what SEAT is than I would, but it's an arm's length uh, sort of a division of the ministry that, that just sort of provides online, uh, almost like Pro-D for teachers is what it's uh, come to be. Um, okay. And that's all the things that I can think of that would, would be relevant uh, right now. Great. Well, thank you, Lisa. And uh, Wendy, do you want to fill folks in on your role? Sure. Um, so yeah, I worked with Allison. Um, I taught uh, the, actually the one, two, three live online program um, with Allison, and um, we—I think I did it for I think about four years, if I, my memory serves. 
And then mm-hmm. um, once Allison moved on to uh, Palliser, I actually moved on to her position as assistant principal. So I'm working with uh, teachers and students in grade one to nine, uh, working on, um, they're all teaching um, online programs, learn online or live online, which we've kind of merged to learn online now in, in uh, merging. We had two different programs. So uh, yeah, so it's exciting to see what's happening and and how things are moving forward in uh, with technology and with education. And so uh, supporting teachers is, is a big role for me, and so I'm looking forward to seeing what you have, Allison. Well, thanks. So it's a work in progress. I tell you, I decided today I need now a level two teacher training course. But um, so l- let me just share with you, and this um, Randy is going to jump in too and talk a little bit about some of the things that we're thinking about for uh, Kenny Learn. Um, but oh, my journey started when I came to Palliser Beyond Borders because uh, a number of teachers who were distributed throughout Southern Alberta joined our staff from outreach classroom and sort of the 1990s. Um, delivery that was part of um, the 1990s distance education and my role was to train those teachers so I began researching and looking at um, different training programs that were available and I came to the conclusion that there were two levels of professional development that needed to happen. One was an in-house training program so that the instructional practice was established right from the get-go about how we expected um, teachers to be working at Palace Beyond Borders. And then the other, uh, a number of teachers have just fallen in love with this work at um, Palace Beyond Borders and Palliser that some of them are now applying for um, post um, postgraduate or graduate work and so um, if if anybody's interested Laurel Beaton has been involved from the ADLC working with Athabasca and the BOLT program which is an online teacher training diploma course I believe it is is it Randy is it diploma yes it is yeah and then of course Randy is another contact certainly for those who are listening to the recording uh, these are folks that you can reach out to Randy is involved in a program at Vancouver Island University and then we'll talk to us a little bit about what Canny Learn is uh, thinking about and uh, one of our teachers right now is in the process of um, seeking admission to the MET program, uh, Masters in Education Technology at UBC, and that's uh, Keith Harrison on our staff. And I worked um, through the University of Southern Queensland, did my training uh, master's uh, with USQ, and then, of course, on uh, Wendy's staff, there are two teachers, Andrea Belke and Lisa, who have had experience working at the University of Calgary's e-learning certificates. So for any of us here or listening to the recording, if you're looking for more information, uh, there are some resources uh, in in certainly in our circles to um, answer questions. Uh, Are there any other programs or training that you're aware of, Lisa uh, or Wendy, that you have engaged in? Um, So go, why don't we hand over the mic, Wendy, to you to talk a little bit about what your research has uh, shared with you or what you've learned. For sure, yeah. Like I've done a fair bit and I, I may have missed, um, I think I, in my research here, I, I didn't have the dates and I think I, I missed the March 1st deadline for uh, Athabasca, but um, there's a lot of programs out there for um, masters in distance education and so um, the one that uh, I'm looking at through Athabasca I think would just personally suit me uh, better. Um, they've got two different streams, I believe, where you can go is to um, uh, more hands-on and then through the uh, thesis um, uh, way to go. So, um, yeah, so I'm really excited about uh, beginning that and starting the process of getting oh, registered. Good. So, yeah. Yay. Uh, and how about you, Lise? Are you familiar with any other programs? Oh boy, I'm trying to think of uh, anything that, uh, well, 
I did my, um, originally I did my MA uh, at Royal Roads when it was then called an MA in Distributed Learning. Uh, now it's the Learning and Technology um, stream. Uh, and Randy's already mentioned VIU. Um, the only other one that I, I, I guess there's two other ones that I have some teachers uh, that in my district that are doing or have done right now. Um, the one from UBC, and, but again, the focus isn't really so much on the, like the online component is almost, the online teaching component is almost uh, uh, an add-on, um, where by virtue of delivering the program in an online fashion, I think the institutions are sort of hoping that they're getting, you know, double purpose out of that. Well, you just completed a master's degree um, online, so obviously you know how online teaching and learning works, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a little bit of a that's a little bit sketchy. But the two that I'm thinking of, um, the one at UBC, um, I, I think it's a, a solid um, degree, but they don't, uh, and and it is it is done all online, and I think it's got a lot of components. But the focus is more on educational technology, um, mm -hmm. you know, in the classroom or or just you know in in the broader scope of things. And then I, I, I put a link to, I put a link in the text chat. Thank you. I can't do those two things at once. Never believe what they say about women and multitasking. <laughs> I can't even. Uh, and then the other one that I have quite a few teachers on uh, right now, and I don't know why it suddenly reared up. It must be a new program, but it's out of Queens. And it's, um, again, I, I don't know what the name of it is, and, and I'll do a quick search here um, because um, I, I've heard a couple of them speak of it, and, and I've got three or four of them right now that are in their first or the end of their first year, and they've been asking me for help and advice on all sorts of things over the year related, again, to educational technology, but I think that the online um, component, the online teaching component is going to be quite small, if existent at all. And like I say, I really have this strong feeling that the institutions that aren't offering specifically online, how to be an online instructor, instructor or facilitator, are hoping that just through the process of osmosis, the learners will know how to do stuff. Mm. So, uh, Randy, uh, would it make sense for you to take a few minutes here to talk about what Kenny Learn is doing, or do you want to circle back to that after I've shown what we're doing here at Palliser? Well, it looks, we can circle back to it, obviously, but, but what's happened is that there's a lot of these programs, and they're in the discussions at the BC uh, Digital Learning Conference in February uh, that we had, at least it was in them. Uh, there's a strong interest and desire from schools who are moving into online practices, uh, whether they have an online school uh, where teachers are really totally at a distance or, or in doing an embedded model where teachers are teaching part of the time in the classroom and part of the time in an online uh, virtual space for online classes. All of them express a strong desire and need for having some specific training on the skills that are required not just to manage technology but to actually um, solicit yeah. engaging pedagogy um, so that conversation is one that carries on, and it has been tried to be filled by the spaces for some of these online diploma programs that the universities have come up with. Um, but not all of them, as Lisa sort of described, necessarily uh, fit the bill, uh, nor, like you mentioned as well, also that you have to do an internship. Um, a lot of these programs don't have an internship where you practice what you preach, so uh, that's why we're playing around with the idea of looking at a competency-based program that would be micro-credentialed that could fit into these programs if teachers wanted to get the degree or credential, uh, a diploma, but more importantly are focused on practical skills for teachers that want to work in digital and online learning environments. So we can certainly talk about that a lot more afterwards, but there is a desire to do this collectively under the Candy Learn umbrella. Okay. Well, thanks. Uh Thanks for that briefing, and I'd like to welcome Verena and Dirk. I bet you guys are joining us from Airdrie, and we are just starting to rock and roll here, talking a little bit about the difference uh, between what I've distinguished as university training programs, and we've just finished talking about that, and we're now moving into uh, talking about our in-house uh, training. Um, do you uh, do you guys want to test out your mic? Testing, does it work? Dirk, yeah. Uh, hello. Hey, Verena and Dirk. 
so we're, I'm just going to start talking a little bit about some of the training that we have uh, engaged in here at Palliser and then tell you where we've gone with our professional development and what, what it looks like um, long term because I, I mentioned in the opening I'm, I'm about to think about what do I do for now the next steps. So here at Palliser we made early on and, and Verena was certainly part of those uh, discussions as she was with us uh, last year. We had those discussions um, that Palliser Beyond Borders is a, an online teaching and learning environment and so the distinction being made there that we're not bringing teachers in to be simply markers online that send a final mark back. We're involved in formative and summative assessment and we're invo involved in um, actually three kinds now of delivery or, or teaching because we've, what we've learned uh, over the last year is that our model has moved from being a strictly online model to a blended learning model. So our instructional practice is both asynchronous using a Moodle platform, synchronous using Blackboard Collaborate and face to face. So we have um, to, uh, we have in our model four campuses where we teach students who come to our sites in Lethbridge, Pitcher Butte where I am now, Vulcan and uh, just most recently a campus in Calgary. So where we, where we went with um, our training is that in the early days we, we identified that our teachers needed training that was very immediate around learning to use the technology. So that's uh, Ian Duke's phrase, learning to use technology before you use technology for learning. So the, um, the, the resources that we um, borrowed and were, were influenced by were, as Randy was talking about earlier, from some of our colleague schools uh, in BC, they shared the, um, uh, the, the resources with us and we actually built the training program in Moodle and I'll show you that. Uh, uh, um, in a few minutes, we looked at um, uh, we looked at a number of schools, and then we built our own Palliser model. And that co the course is is right now shared in its um, early draft stages on the hub. And um, if you're interested in getting access to it, um, Lisa or Wendy Joan Coy is. Um, is one of the the uh, people who um, worked with me in the early days, and of course Dirk is um, is involved in the the Moodle Hub, and he can talk a little bit about uh, how the hub works. If if you're not familiar with that, um, Lisa, I think you are, eh, Wendy? Give me a thumbs up if you yeah, are. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, and and we ended up choosing Blackboard Collaborate as the other area that we were going to do focus training on. And and I went through a whole analysis of why we selected Blackboard Collaborate, and in fact revisited it again this year. And uh, we have decided we're going to still stay with Blackboard Collaborate. It mostly because of feedback from the teachers. Um, and uh, and if you if you want, I have a spreadsheet where we compare and analyze all the different resources. And this actually was started by Tim Martinez at Edmonton Public at Argyle, where Wendy is, and he then shared that with me. And we've continued to build it. So if any of you are engaged in that kind of thinking um, and comparison, I can share that information with you. So. Um, let's go and uh, I'll flip back from application sharing to this screen, but essentially I made a decision that I was not going to reinvent the wheel around the Moodle training and how to use stuff. So I ended up um, 
sourcing information from Moodle.org, uh, some of the YouTube videos, and Vereen is the queen of, of doing search around YouTube videos and how do you, I don't know, add this plugin or <laughs> work with that HTML block. Verena would find these videos and then we embedded it in actually a, a, a Moodle staff room. And we, we sourced um, books and electronic books from Pact Publishing out of the UK. And this, um, at Pact Publishing, Joan Coy's book around building quizzes and assessment has actually been published. So we have access um, or, or I have those resources as well and happy to share any information with any of you about that. And then I looked at uh, Open to Know Lambda uh, Solutions and in the end um, went with a certification group that, um, uh, and I'm just, why does their name escape me? Somebody can help me. But we ended up purchasing seats in uh, to get the, the level one course creator for all of our teachers. And now we have teachers who want to go to uh, earn that course um, administrator certification. And the um, um, Randy Dirk wants to know if Allison has guest access open. Oh, I think, yeah, I should. And I, you know what, I'll pull it up right now. Um, so let's go to Chrome. So what you should be seeing now, and just grab your mic and tell me if you are, is you are seeing the dashboard of our Moodle uh, landing page. Yep, perfect. Yep. Okay, um, so what we uh, what we have we're we're in the process of developing this uh, this landing page as our dashboard for students. So we're we're going to embed an HTML block with some quick links. We have our Blackboard Collaborate timetable, and then um, I have uh, a staff room where we build and put all of our learning objects that we don't want to have to uh, search through for email. And actually, this this staff room was started, I think, by Wendy and Daylene over at Argyle. And then you guys shared with me your template. If you want me to share back what I've got, I'm happy to do that. So then we go into the teacher training course. And the course is, is um, split into five different stages. So we have the learning about online teaching and learning, and this is where we talk about a little bit what uh, Randy uh, referred to earlier as the concept of what does pedagog pedagogy look like online. And really the purpose of this is to begin to challenge some of those preconceived notions that we have about what online learning is and more often than not early on in the discussion forums we're dealing with concepts of marking online versus teaching and learning online. Uh, so we address some of the theories around assertion of social presence and we begin to look at some of the trends and Joan uh, Coy um, shared some very interesting uh, research that she'd done on trends, and I'm sure this could even be updated. And the uh, and this is the beginning of us modeling a. It's really a um, um, a competency-based assessment strategy that was developed from those early days of research at Live Online. But the whole idea that uh, teachers um, build their own portfolios of, uh, and I'm just going to take us to a portfolio of the competencies that they are developing as they are building their practice in, um, in an online environment. So essentially by the end of the year, and we actually had a celebration of learning, well the end of last year where teachers 
really highlighted what are were some of the key competencies they'd grown, but we uh, we had one again in December, and this is this is really just a checklist um, that the teachers are using to begin to identify the areas of competency that they need to work and engage students in learning online at Pallister Beyond Borders. And so we go through um, this this portfolio here is a an, is uh, an entire list of the discussions that we have in this course from beginning to end. And so last year we actually got as far as student engagement. So we went through maybe the first two units of this course and then this year we're doing a lot of work around some of these other areas um, uh, that um, some of the other theories around how you apply it into an online learning environment. So I'm just going to go back to the course here and back to our main page. Are there any questions um, that anyone wants to throw in at this point? I'm not I'm not seeing my I, screen. I have a, just this? a quick question, Allison, while you're sure. um, refreshing the What's been the the main driver uh, that's been attracting uh, teachers to your model? Is it? Um, and I'm not sure how I want to frame it. I I'm just curious that um, you know, are they seeing what what I'm seeing or what I'm hoping to see more of is in that you know taking the best bits of um, online pedagogy and face to face pedagogy and marrying them and then always having the best tool at your disposal. Like that's what I see when I look at stuff like this. But what's been the driver for your teachers? Well, um, the the answer uh, the, and it, it would be interesting to ask Verena in the from her perspective in the early days. Um, we had it it I think the the answer is best, or the, the question is best answered with the perspective of the division uh, at Palliser Regional Schools. We're a very tiny little rural um, school board between Lethbridge and Calgary, and the small rural schools are looking for support to supplement courses or enhance the offerings that they offer their kids in these rural high schools. So what has emerged is that we have mostly students who are sitting in little rural communities and for maybe one a period a day they're timetabled in front of a computer where they're logging in and connecting with my teachers for that Math 31 uh, calculus course because there isn't one offered at their local high school. And so from the division's perspective, the idea is to enhance opportunities and provide choice where 10 years ago that, that wasn't possible. And I think the driver from the teacher's perspective, and Verena, you jump in here um, any time, is um, that we now have a group of teachers who have this vision of exactly what our name says, uh, providing the Palliser experience beyond our borders and certainly uh, beyond that brick and mortar uh, experience to make the, the connections for kids um, to, to have access to things that they wouldn't normally have access to. Are there any other thoughts you want to add to that, Verena? From your perspective, thinking back? No, I, I was agreeing with you. I just like it. Um, I was just writing it's playing with the virtual and physical learning environment. And I always remember we talked about creating one giant learning commons. That's how mm -hmm. I kind of saw it. Yeah. But yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. And I know, Dirk, you guys at Rocky View Schools have a similar model. Is there anything you can add to the, those thoughts about choice and opportunity? Uh, yeah, so we do. Um, we use that similar. We have, um, I think, three on-site um, satellite little schools um, that that um, look after the online K 
kids still online, but also have the blended approach where kids come in, you know, with with some uh, regularity. And so the um, the actual full online uh, enrollments are, or I, I don't think that has necessarily grown too much. Like it, it's it's sort of the blended piece that is really uh, sort of what what we're doing there for sure. Mm hmm. And and Wendy, is there anything that you can add to that? Well, I think um, talking from my own personal experience, just having um, this kind of a program for teachers that are new to it, I think is just it's so it's so good because um, Allison, as you know, we started really with nothing, right, and, and uh, built from from where we were at and and built. Um, a lot by trial and error and learning from each other, but um, having this in place and, and learning the pedagogy and, and knowing all that, um, I think it's, it's really valuable to, to teachers and to new staff. Mm -hmm. And what I'll show you in a few minutes is how we ended up structuring this in our first year and, and have enhanced it in our second year. I don't know if my application sharing is working on your computers on my iPhone. I'm still seeing the teacher portfolio. Okay, it's okay, it's way slow. Okay. Um, what else can I shut down? Oh my goodness, this is not good. Um, I think it's a little bit of connectivity issue uh, in your wireless for your laptop. So that may be part of it. So certainly shutting down application sharing right now. Are you getting any oh, chipmunk okay. voice uh, from us? No, I'm not. Then it just may be a firewall or some other issue that <laughs> Dirk can probably speak to it more. Oh, I haven't seen it fixed like that in years. Okay, well, I will, I, will, I will talk then through the, you, you saw the screen. Um, I will just stop sharing and talk through the, the next section of the course um, looks at, um, so we go through the pedagogy at first and then we look at the um, how do you teach asynchronously. So these are the resources that I have shared in that asynchronous part of the course. And we ended up going with, um, uh, I, I bought a, a number of seats with the, um, uh, and you, you can choose um, who you would like to, to go with, but I ended up buying a number of seats. And I'm just trying to remember, it wasn't Lambda Solutions. Do you remember the name, Verena? I um, can't remember. Okay. Uh, I'm just looking um, in the course now. The Moodle course creator, um, the one we ended up going with was um, Remote Learner. That's what I was uh, thinking of. And we went with Remote Learner uh, because they happened to that year have the the availability of the, the trainer and, and so on. So a number of the teachers Oh, they've cha they've changed names since then. So now we're looking at a couple of our teachers want to go for the course creator certification and the um, and the admin certification. And then the next chapter in the course is literally around the the strategies for teaching synchronously. And I found a six-hour online program. It's pretty basic, but what is so useful is the modeling that Education Impact offers in, in showing how you use online teaching strategies. So a lot of their work has become um, um, is is based on uh, based on best practices, and you. Can can see how they engage students, and then uh, the teachers could use that for their um, their their own students in Blackboard Collaborate. So that was a six-hour video-based program, and 
then uh, what we have done is really a practice that was developed by James and Marilyn at Argyle is we have um, trained our teachers or the teachers have developed a practice where they record in their um, in their Blackboard Collaborate sessions and then embed those recordings as learning objects both in the, the work plan and in the courses. And I see Daylene has joined us, so welcome Daylene. Daylene uh, um, Lisa is from Argyle at Edmonton Public Schools and a colleague of Wendy's. So in the next part of the course, we talk about instructional design. And at this stage of the game, the, the, this training course that I developed was really about how to learning to use the technology and then understanding how to shift by about December in a teacher's practice from learning to use the technology to using the technology for learning. And so a lot of the work that we did around instructional design is um, I put teachers in contact with Neela, who is a teacher at Argyle and has a website and a Twitter feed. And I follow the work she does around instructional design. And right now her work is really centered around uh, gamification. And some of our, our teachers are um, uh, working with Neela back and forth. And Jen jo Giles has joined us from um, from uh, Palliser and of course she's coming in because she's expecting some some teachers in here later uh, later on or some students. But we went through a process of developing a Palliser practice and this Palliserization practice is what we now have as standard in all our courses. We have a, a Palliser palette and you might have seen that when uh, when I showed um, showed you our uh, courses. Um, it, it's, a, it's a palette that has all of the standard things that we expect to see in a course that include um, not only our new branding that we've developed, but literacy resources, outlining, of course, outlines, assessment practices. And yeah, for sure, you can all share my um, Google Doc to the, the, um, to, uh, to you, um, Deline. And we, we ended up putting some design standards in place and what, what's interesting and where we've gone this year, and I'm going to try application sharing one more time, Randy. It'll be a quick view so you guys can see where I've gone. Uh, and this actually is uh, some combined work. Let me just show you. Is it coming through for you guys? Yeah. Um, I just want to go to, we've done some work around, where's my embedded design? Uh, embedded PD, here it is. Okay, so what we've done this year is we finish at noon on Fridays and we have taken the Fridays over the course of the year uh, and said that instead of doing teacher training, which we were doing actually twice a week in that very first year, um, we are now doing it uh, once a month. The other, uh, one Friday a month, we have our staff meeting, which really is not about just information sharing. It's where we actually do a lot of our intervention work and looking at data and making decisions around next steps. And then the other two Fridays a month are collaborative PD. And, and what we've done this year is we have taken, uh, we've taken the, the, a course design rubric and we've palliserized it. And so we have looked at um, how do we fit in our divisional goals and, um, uh, and assess whether or not our courses are actually meeting those standards. So we built in a rubric for assessing our courses around our literacy expectations, around assessment, and around safe and caring, and the digital citizenship piece. 
so this the teachers spent the fall developing that rubric and last week for the first time we took one course each and have done a test on whether or not that course is is um, where it sits with, on the rubric and it, interestingly some of the teachers did a pre-assessment where they thought the course was and then did an assessment afterwards and of course what they learned in some cases is um, their course wasn't actually where they expected it would be. So um, we talked a little bit about that embedded um, PD on Fridays and so where we're going now with our teacher development is we have pr we pretty well um, finish the course. The next unit uh, after learning how to teach synchronously and asynchronously is how do you use Web 2.0 tools and so in our first semester on those Friday afternoons the teachers took time to share some of the Web 2.0 tools that you, they're using either integrated with Google and or Moodle and then we have done some work around um, assessment and that's the last chapter or the last section of the course and that is how do you assess online and uh, part of our rubric is uh, developing courses that are competency based uh, courses and so our work has really been focused on uh, assessing for competency rather than coverage and that's a phrase that comes right from Wendy uh, a number of years ago, I, I remember Wendy saying that. So we've a lot of the work from those early days have really influenced our practice. And and if you want a copy of this course, it's available on the hub, and and Dirk or, or Joan um, can be uh, contacted for information about that. I'm going to stop there because I know we're getting close to the mark, and uh, I'll hand the mic back here to Randy to talk a little bit about some of the work that's happening at the Kenny Learn level and certainly I'm happy to answer any questions or um, uh, respond to any discussion. I think why don't we do that first. <coughs> that's right Allison. Uh, other folks okay. with your overview uh, <coughs> for that and um, is it Joan that we go through or can Dirk see another one that we could use as well to get a, a access to a copy? <coughs> Yeah, for sure. Dirk uh, can help us, eh, Dirk? Okay. That would be great, Dirk. I wouldn't mind uh, getting uh, a copy of um, Allison, just let me say about the, before we jump into just talking about anything else, uh, very extensive and very impressive uh, course and operations and setup, but more importantly, how you've infused professional learning as a part of the whole staff development, as part of the culture mm -hmm. of the of Palliser Beyond Borders. I think that that's, that's a, a, a real coup. Uh, but it's also, I'm not surprised because of who you are as an individual and who I know you as as a professional. So I think your whole approach to this is is very reflective of that. And I don't see you as being uh, about content. Um, I see you as being about process, pedagogy, and outcomes, and I, you know, or competencies. And I think that that orientation, I think, is really, really important to, to for me to see that that's what's in this particular spot. And it's not a one shot, uh, pass the course and you can teach. It's, uh, no, this is ongoing part of your professional learning experience. So I just want to say thank you. That was really great to see that, but more importantly to hear how it works and how you designed it. So other thoughts, comments about, uh, the Palliser's approach to this. Well, and I think just um, to echo uh, what Randy just said, even though it annoys me when people do that in a staff meeting, um, I, I think that can't be emphasized enough that building in um, the, whatever you want to call it, the collaboration or the PD or the teacher support, it doesn't matter what you call it, but actually building it in. And I think that's where, uh, you know, we're struggling right now uh, here in BC where um, our K-9 to uh, curriculum uh, is being renewed and is going uh, out of draft and uh, into enforcement in September and the uh, 10 to 12 programs uh, following September, at least that's the plan. And so our teachers are, you know, in this um, this sort of chaos right now and, 
every time there's there's change, it's so much easier to ease the path along if you can just find time. And I, I just, um, yeah, I'm just re exactly repeating what Randy said, but um, I think it's really, really important. Great, thanks, Lisa. I appreciate that. And, and Lisa, just so you should know, I just did an email exchange I went through with between Tim and Val Irvin from UVic, and she's got a proposal around some workshops around the curriculum changes and easing things in. So if you want to reach out to her, uh, do so. I'm actually going to meet with Tim tomorrow morning on a Meta Victoria push on that. Sorry, another side for that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this um, is terrific. And I can speak. I know that Randy, we've got the drop in coming, so we, we our time is cooking. Mm -hmm. Um, I just wanted to jump in um, to reach out to Wendy and Daylene because Wendy was very much involved in these early days and that goes back to 2006 I think it is Wendy when we were you know in the coffee shop in, in Black Diamond uh, figuring out how to start live online the next day and uh, um, of course our work uh, evolved over those years at Argyle and certainly it's influenced the work I'm doing now at Palliser but at the same time with Wendy's leadership the work at Argyle and the teacher development and training that you've done has evolved because you carried through successfully that merging of the concept of LearnNet with live online to create your learn online program and so uh, are there some teacher training or, t or teacher development tools, resources, approaches that you have uh, since developed at Argyle, Wendy or Daylene? Well, Daylene and I did, we did do a new teacher um, kind of a training manual kind of thing that we work with with some of our new teachers but um, going forward um, with um, with the the merge between the learn net and the live online um, was pretty seamless with the uh, one to six uh, di divi division one and two and we're seeing now I think where um, the division uh, three may need you know a little bit more um, support and uh, help that way so I think that's something we'll definitely have to look at moving forward uh, with that div three group. Yeah, I concur with Wendy for sure. We have processes in place that we've developed based on feedback from new teachers and, and reflection from new teachers as they come in. So we've put some processes in place, but uh, in, and it's more of a mentorship model with more veteran kinds of teachers who have gone through all the stages of what it looks like to being an online teacher here. So we have processes in place, but a course like this is something that would definitely complement um, new teachers who are coming in from anywhere who have limited experience in what it looks like or, or the experience of becoming a, a strong online teacher and considering all of the pedagogical considerations, course design, all of the things. It's really quite complex. So um, something like this to complement the things that we're already doing will just make that experience and that learning curve so much smoother for new teachers as they come in. So really appreciate your work in this, Alice, and I know it's been a lot of work that you've pulled together and we can certainly see nuances of your experiences here at Argyle, so it's great to see you, and thanks a lot for sharing. <laughs> You're welcome. And I've just pulled up here um, because Wendy and Daylene um, shared early on the template they built for an online staff room. So the when what I do is anytime there's information that's being shared electronically, I take the information and I embed it in this staff room and I'll just scroll down so you can see, I don't know, I've got like 29, no, I have 36 <laughs> different areas that we are building resources and tools. So for instance, we're just building out this section on plagiarism and, and information for teachers on, you know, designing your assessment um, tools so that you're not you're not building a course that's easy for students to plagiarize and literacy is another big focus so we have these like a bookshelf of resources that we share with our teachers and so it means
means that a new teacher coming on who has missed the 40,000 emails that came the year before now has access to all of the resources. And, and what we did last year was literally took a piece of the staff room and said, go find one, one area that you haven't looked at before and um, you know, come back five minutes later and tell us what's in there. And now, of course, the teachers are much more involved um, and, and have access to this and are, are more uh, involved in that. Anyway, that was uh, just a bit of an aside there, Randy. <clears throat> okay, so what I wanted to say, I'm just looking at the time and knowing that your room's going to be taken up <clears throat> for me for other things, apologies about the throat and the cold. Um, this conversation around supporting teachers to work in these spaces and build skills has been one, as I mentioned before, that is carrying on. <clears throat> what we've done is started to pull together a group. So if you're interested in being part of that conversation under the broader sort of national Canadian e-learning network umbrella, um, please do so, or just pop into the Google Doc <coughs> that we have uh, available, that, uh, and it's shareable uh, in there, to uh, to look at where we started. And all we've done to start with the conversation is to have a description of competencies. Um, we want to align it as a competency-based approach and probably micro-credential it, and then uh, possibly look to, well, not possibly, but then look to those micro-credentials as being recognized in other programs in the post-secondary so that it provides a value add for folks that want to carry forward. Yeah. But the intent is to really address those skill building areas that are required. To not replicate what, say, Palliser is doing, or Abbotsford is doing, or Canlis, or Edmonton, or Argyle, or whatever it is that you've got going in programs, but to pull resources together collectively to create a common license for content, therefore making it available for others to use as part of the programs, by then also putting a, a Canadian e-learning network credential into it and to build those connections to post-secondary institutions. We just find that doing it collectively together is probably much more easier for us uh, because we're all trying to accomplish the same things. But that also can bridge the door open to other connections that you want to make in your own regional areas for your own teachers as you continue to move forward. But this whole area about the professional learning experience and doing it on a continuous basis, not a one-off, is really an important area that it doesn't matter how mm -hmm. much attention and energy we put in there. <laughs> it's all important and it all needs to be done. So I hope that you can join in at some point in time uh, or at least give us some of your ideas. So that link is in there in the um, in the text messaging and I'll add that into my presentation and then I'll share that presentation out with um, out to you, Daylene, and uh, who, who else wanted it? And Randy. Uh, yeah, if you, if you can, I'll post it, if you're okay with that, on, on our site as well. Okay. So we'll stop recording now then. <laughs>